King Zhou, was the last king of the Shang dynasty, had long been considered, responsible for the destruction of his kingdom. As one of the most controversial kings in the history of China, Zhou was always described as being aggressive, and extravagant, together with his beloved evil queen, Sudaji, they destroyed the kingdom. Many other historical events indicated that, he was an ambitious and exceptional king, that had flourished his kingdom, but failed because of conspiracy and betrayal. When Di Xin's grandfather was the king of Shang, he felt threatened by one of his vassal state named, Zhou, which kept expanding through battles. Though Zhou's lord had paid tribute constantly, and never behaved irresponsibly, Di Xin's grandfather, tricked and imprisoned Zhou's current lord, who then passed away during the captivity. This event made, Zhou consider Empire Shang as their biggest, and only enemy. Therefore, when Di Xin became the king, the Zhou Empire had been preparing their vengeance for a long time. Di Xin, was very intelligent enough to win of all his arguments, and he was strong enough to hunt wild beasts, with his bare hands. After his father passed away, Di Xin got the throne, because of his exceptional strength and talent, also for the reason that, his birth mother was the noble queen. However, many officials still support his older brother named, Weizhi, the first son of Di Xin's father, who didn't get the throne for his mother being concubine. Consequently, at the beginning of Di Xin's reign, he spent lots of time suppressing and fighting against those nobles, and officials, that were opposed legality of his throne. He nominated many civilian and slave-born people, to be officials and generals of Shang. Under their assistance, Di Xin published some advanced policies to develop economy. Many nobles of Shang, include Di Xin's big brother Weizhi, escaped and surrendered to Zhou. They were unsatisfied with Di Xin's taking power. When Di Xin ascended to the throne, many nearby kingdoms had already expanded to some degree, and kept challenging Shang's authority. As an exceptional militarist, King Di Xin led Shang's army, defeated all of those rebellions, and largely expanded his territory. Those decades of wars brought King Di Xin huge territory. Most coastal provinces of China were included in the reign, for the first time in Chinese history. King Di Xin, was fond of wine and women. He once attacked the small state of the Lord of Su, because Su had not delivered tributes. In order to appease the King Di Xin, the Lord of Su, presented him with his beautiful daughter, Sudaji. King Di Xin, was in love with his new consort, that, he forgot all about governing and fulfilled all the wishes of beauty, Deji. Deji, used to banquet on the Shakyo Terrace, where she had dug out a wine pound, and a meat forest, where her guests dance with each other naked. Di Xin raised taxes to pay all his luxury, and tightened corporal punishment. He also invented the punishment of the burning pillar, that was to be walked by offenders. Deji, thereupon suggested aggravating punishment, in order to demonstrate the authority of the king. Each time Deji watched at an execution, she burst out laughing. In the year 1046 BC, Zhou's Lord Ji Fa, was informed that, Shang's main force was fighting far away, which left the capital city of Shang poorly defended. Hence, Lord Ji Fa led Zhou's army, together with some other rebellion lords, they decisively attacked Shang's capital. This was the Battle of Muye. On the other side, King Di Xin had to arm many slaves to fight back. Di Xin's royal soldiers and generals, most of whom sacrificed in the end, fought bravely, but still failed. Hearing Zhou's army succeeded, and was marching towards the royal palace, King Di Xin, wore his most valuable outfit, came to the tallest building in his palace, and burned himself down there. Zhou's Lord Ji Fa, then cut off Di Xin's head, and killed his beloved women. Then Lord Ji Fa founded the new empire in Chinese history.